All right, here's a hot take. Plagiarism is actually a good idea. We'll explain ourselves in a moment for our blasphemy, but just stick with us. So there's a huge discussion about plagiarism on YouTube right now. Because a lot of major creators have been found to steal other creators' work and pass it off as their own. And we wanted to talk about our experiences, our personal experiences with plagiarism. Because, one, uh-huh. we've had our work stole, stolen? Yeah. Copied? <laughs> And, just, and two, we're finding out that plagiarism is actually just a great thing to do on, on platforms like YouTube because the algorithm sort of rewards it. Great to do like as strategy, but if you do it, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, I, well, yeah. The start of plagiarism becoming such a hot topic right now on YouTube was started by H Bomber Guy and his video essay on mm-hmm. other video essayists who steal. Today's content is a little different from the content we normally do because like, are we video essayists? Uh, no. But do we do online comedy? Um, depends. On whether you think we're funny. We saw all this plagiarism happening on like the essay side of YouTube and we're here in the comedy neck of the woods and we have experiences with plagiarism so we wanted to like put our little put a little add a little sauce a little sauce add, add a little, a little add, salt add, add a little, little uh, oregano a little, oh, <laughs> Hey, didn't see you there. Thanks for coming. Don't follow me into the bathroom next time. But while you're here, me and Danny first rose to prominence on YouTube through our impersonation covers, where we did impersonations to music. Now that kind of video in and of itself is nothing new. But what was a little bit unique about our videos is that they had an improvised vibe. We used paper cards, our performances are on the spot, it's all in one take, and we leave in a lot of mistakes, do a lot of ad libs, and laugh at each other's shitty humor all the time. So I just want to be super clear, we're not claiming we invented doing impersonations to music. Music, but there are elements of our videos that were original ideas of ours, and we would only consider the possibility of someone copying us if we felt like some of those elements were being copied along with the impersonations to music thing. I can't tell you how many times Danny and I have been notified that Jimmy Fallon stole our video ideas. Here's what they're talking about. Our two biggest video concepts, the impersonation covers and the Mad Libs covers, have both kind of been done on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon after we made our videos. Now their version of Mad Libs covers are different enough from ours to pass the vibe check, so we're just going to be talking about the impersonation covers from now on. So the wheel of impressions that Jimmy does with a lot of his guests uh, don't scream straight up copied by any means because obviously the way it presents itself is so visibly different, and I can't speak to the overall level of preparedness and prep they do, but if I were to guess, uh, absolutely it's prepared because if it's for a live show, I would not imagine any celebrity would be okay with just potentially looking horrible. Like we fucking do all the time. We just go in. <laughs> also, to back up my it's totally prepared a hypothesis, the roots, the house band, are playing full on arrangements during this whole thing. So the idea of it spinning a random song doesn't make a lot of sense to me personally. Moving from the Wheel of Impressions, he also essentially did a Zoom version of an impersonation cover with Seth MacFarlane in the exact style that Mason and I do our impersonation covers. He holds up signs that have voices on it that Seth MacFarlane has to do on the spot to a song. And like in the Peter Hollins example that we'll mention later, they claim it's improvised like ours are, but it's not improvised. So we have some like assessment criteria emerging, Mm -hmm. right? Number one. How unique was the idea to like your personality or your lived experience? experience like could only you have come up with this number two do you have like surrounding context or info or evidence that indicates like the likelihood of them just yoinking your shit numero tres how similar was their like presentation and framing to yours the stuff that didn't need to be the same but was anyway if your material scores plagiarism in all three of the categories you might have plagiarism welcome to cancel council we're your cancel counselors are you canceled we're about to find out this is cancel council where we're going to litigate each of the examples we're discussing and decide if they're really plagiarists and or should be canceled. I do say, sir. What a lovely thing. And this is already a disaster. Danny's and having way too much fun with the wigs. I look like an anime character. All right, so first we'll take a look at the Jimmy Fallon case. So here would be the case for why he could be called a plagiarist or a thief. Similar to us, they do the impersonation cover in this like improvised vibe mm-hmm. where they're saying it's on the spot. Another argument I might make is that uh, he also doesn't have a clean record. He has a history of taking a lot of things that he does with his celebrity guests from YouTube. And normally I think it's okay to be inspired by certain things but the fact that he's co-opting it for his show and making a shit ton of money off of it doesn't feel good. And of course, the way that they make money is that they run ads on their show and they fill that show with YouTubers' ideas. There are multiple examples of this that I'm sure you could look up, but one in particular is that Joe Thatcher once created the Whisper Challenge idea that Jimmy just completely co-opted. He has a history of taking from YouTubers. He very well could be again. In the Seth MacFarlane
Fallon video specifically, uh, Jimmy Fallon holds up literal pieces of paper, the exact same thing we do, right. uh, in order to, uh, on the spot, get Seth MacFarlane to switch voices. It's not improvised, though, probably? Probably not, it's, no. It's like, it's like done remotely, right? So yeah. the idea of doing it uh, in real time yeah. remotely feels kind of impossible right. to me. If it were on the spot, I might concede the paper cards, but because I don't think it is, I think the paper cards are from us. Yeah, so totally guilty, right? Guilty and canceled. Canceled, canceled. Guilty. Jimmy Fallon canceled. <laughs> 35 to life. <laughs> All right, now here is the case for why he's not a plagiarist uh, and should fine, not be canceled. Fine. For the bulk of his impersonation covers, they're mm -hmm. the wheel of impersonations. Yeah. Really different in presentation from mm -hmm. us, right? I think if you're willing to bend the presentation to that extent, it's not the same content anymore, mm -hmm. so it's not stolen anymore. It's also absolutely worth noting that Jimmy Fallon has been known for musical impersonations for like his entire career, so it wouldn't be hard to imagine his team independently coming up with the idea for Jimmy Fallon to very naturally do impersonation covers. And of course, we have no claim over impersonations covers or impersonation covers. True. And as we've seen in the case of the Fine Brothers versus the Internet, if you are overzealous and claiming really broad ideas, you could get canceled. Oh, no. Now we're canceled. Uh -oh. Stinky diaper. So considering everything in the case of Jimmy Fallon versus fucking us, I think he's not guilty ultimately in the case of plagiarizing us. Yeah, I agree. No plagiarism, no cancel. But Jimmy Fallon is guilty in the case of having a fake fucking laugh. Oh, get him. If I had to ultimately decide how much of a plagiarism Jimmy Fallon did to us, I would say it's a pretty minor offense, if even an offense at all. Well, if 10's like a full-on plagiarism, right, or like 9 or 10, I'd maybe give it like a 4 or 5, yeah. And in Cancel Council, we don't drop the plagiarism hammer for anything shy of like a 10. It's important to give people the benefit of the doubt when they come up with the same idea you did, right? Because it's plausible you had the same idea at the same time. For example, you might not know this, but I originally wrote Wrote this segment in as cancel court, right. which Danny then informed me is really similar to an idea that already exists called content court. Yeah, it was originally done by H3H3, Ethan Klein. He called it content court. In which they litigate aspects of content. So it's pretty similar to this. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't want to be called a plagiarist or canceled for that. So I do want to be careful here. Hey, Mason, guess my fart. <laughs> You look so fucking stupid right now. Let's look at the case of Peter Hollins. Peter Hollins is a long-standing acapella YouTuber. He's very popular, and his videos are quite good. We're going to focus on one specific kind of video he's made, though, and it's one that uh, pretty clearly copies our video style. Better. Next. Oh. Let us go. Let us go. Now this doesn't need to, is he holding up the wrong sign? Now this doesn't necessarily mean he's guilty of plagiarism, but we're like 100% sure he watched our videos and copied every possible element he could from them. All right, let's talk about the case of Peter Hollins yeah. v. fucking us. Um, <laughs> and I, I think this one is a step up from Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, he didn't just kind of piggyback off of our idea. He did it almost exactly as close as possible as he could to the way that we do it. The presentation of the video and other aspects of it are just completely the exact same, like to a, a weird T. Yeah, weird T. Fucked up T. When we do impersonation covers, we have paper signs yeah. and we have like a, a sort of symmetrical yep. camera Just presentation. Like but you don't have to do it that way, right? right? If you organically parallel thought a musical impersonations idea, it probably wouldn't literally look exactly like ours. And other than because this is just how we did it, why the paper signs? I don't th we were just poor. I mean, now that it's been like 10 years, I don't still think that paper signs look good. It's not necessarily the best way to even present this idea. It's just that we did it that way, so they want to do it that way. Basically, there's a lot of elements to these videos that are not necessary to the core joke of it all, right. which means when these details are all the same and all this unnecessary stuff still feels copied, yeah. it feels a little closer to plagiarism than it should. So the case for calling this plagiarism, mm -hmm. right? They say it's improvised, even though it's like clearly not. No. Even their titling is copying the conventions we set out yeah, in yeah. our video titles, even when it doesn't apply. Right, right. And it also is one that we started like 2014. I've literally put that in the same video for since 2014, which is crazy. They also didn't necessarily go about crediting us whatsoever. Right. Uh, usually if you are to do a similar concept or the same concept someone else has done, especially on things like TikTok, you'll say inspiration by or credited to. Yeah, it's like to. good etiquette at the very least. Yeah, yeah. And even if they did 
do that. I don't know if it would entirely be okay, but that certainly would have made it less. uh, So more than the Jimmy Fallon case, it does kind of feel like they took something of ours. We also have direct text evidence that they got the idea from watching our videos. We literally had a mutual friend reach out to us about how they are going to do our video. And we also have evidence that they don't one take it. So, you know, so there's a lot less room for plausible deniability that they had the same idea at the same time (laughs) we did coincidentally. Of course, of course. I also know Peter Hollins personally, and I've known him for a good while, which means he's more likely to have seen your content. And it's less likely that he's like, oh, I had never seen that. I just came up with it. Here's the case for not plagiarism, though. Mm -hmm. Similarly to Jimmy Fallon, we don't own the concept of impressions or covers. Also, the guy that he was working with, right, Brian Hull in these Mm -hmm. videos is an impersonation nations guy that's his thing it feels like a natural melding of his covers and yes. uh, brian hole's impressions right and so like the vibe check element of all this mm. actually feels okay here yeah. totally agree that in a really important way we do not own impersonation covers and mm. i would go so far as to argue that that's such a big piece of this pie right. that if you can't claim ownership of it it like totally tanks your plagiarism claim right and if a really big piece of that pie is fair game then a really big piece is not plagiarism that's Right. So ultimately, uh, even though I'm not going to lie to you, Danny, this one feels like shit. <laughs> it hurt my the, little butthole. The, yeah. this, this one sucked. It like sucks to see someone profit from your idea more than you did with absolutely no credit and also have a really transparent record of stealing it with intent. Yeah. However, mm. it's ultimately not plagiarism. Mm. You know, it, 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 that's very big of you, Mason. No, it's not even <laughs> big of me. It's just like it wouldn't make sense ultimately for us to be like, cancel him. He did a bad thing. I think ultimately you are allowed to do this. It just feels bad. Yeah, especially if there's like a monetary gain that he probably achieved more than we did. So of the crimes of plagiarism, not guilty. The only thing he's guilty of is watching our videos and copying them. Right. And at the end of the day, if we start a big stink, it might create a larger problem than it like tries to solve. Yeah. So we let it be. Yeah, it's like farting and then a shark comes out, you know? How? <laughs> I don't know. In, in what way? You were saying like, don't make a big stink out of it. it it's it's going to be something small, right? But then when you make a big stink, it turns into a, a shark. Like it's a fart. You want it to be a oh. fart, but instead it's a shark. I want to be really clear that you're supposed to watch this with like an open-minded nuance where you don't go harass anyone. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to impress upon you why these people are kind of not guilty also. Yeah. So don't harass anyone ever. If you ever are harassing anyone on our behalf, uh, you're an idiot and you're actually our enemy. Yeah, if you harass, I'll kick you in the nuts. Not everyone has nuts. I'll kick you in the butthole. A lot of this shit is a complicated gray area. And in our opinion, when you're in doubt, you don't accuse people of plagiarism. It's sure. a serious accusation. It often like triggers a bunch of like really defensive and hostile reactions. And you don't necessarily want to enter the court of public opinion without mm. like a ton of like airtight receipts. Yeah. And yeah. so when we're in doubt, like we are now, mm-hmm. we just go, eh, kind of feels bad, but we're going to declare it fair game. Sure. So we've talked about why rendering a guilty verdict is kind of like really rare and hard when it Mm. comes to like comedy content. So please take us seriously when we say Brent Rivera is 100% (laughs) guilty of plagiarism. 1000%. Brent Rivera is this content creator who's been uh, doing his thing for a very long time. I think back to the Vine days. He's amassed like tens of millions of followers on each platform. Keep in mind, his content's definitely for like younger audiences. Uh, Like Mason and I are not his intended audience. So even though we think he's super cringy, that's not what we're criticizing him for here. Mm, Cringe is okay. (laughs) But plagiarism is not, which once again, he's totally guilty of. Yes. We're not the first ones to point out the fact that Brent Rivera steals constantly. No, uh, there are videos by Ludwig and uh, Curtis Connor, which kind of more further delve into the individual examples of this. So we're not actually going to focus on every example of Brent Rivera stealing because you should go watch their videos of it. But we are going to talk about a plagiarism example of Brent Rivera's that no one's talked about yet because it's kind of more recent and it's about a friend of ours, our friend Chad. All right, we're here with Chad Maxwell. Chad, would you say you're a friend of ours? Yeah. We understand that you uh, yourself uh, would be a victim of plagiarism. Yeah. Can you define the word plagiarism? No. Uh, uh, I can use it in a sentence. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brent Rivera plagiarized my video I made with my friend Sam. Am I supposed to catch here? Catch. Okay, okay, okay catch. So right. Yeah, okay. Ready? Oh, okay. Okay. 
the most core joke of it. It's definitely not an like, original right, joke exactly. at all. But I think we can agree that like the presentation of it, this exact iteration mm-hmm. of it was like definitely original thought and original creativity involved. Yeah, sometimes it's presentation and how you deliver it. Yeah, they do the exact same things. Like they didn't even slightly vary it. If there was like enthusiastic credit being given, like that would be great. We've actually had some friends recreate that video and they tagged us in it. I'm okay with that because it's like good etiquette. It is. I yeah. think and it's just it's just manners. I would go further than just saying Brent Rivera didn't like shout you out or credit you. I would argue that in Brent Rivera's case because of how often he steals, it's actually like an important and necessary part of his plot to not ever credit people like yeah. like if he credits one person it kind of opens at this point it kind of opens a door where people start to you know ask well if you credited one person why didn't you credit of the other 13,000 people you've stolen from you know I mean first of all he's got 21 million followers mm-hmm. I have 50k what was your initial reaction like were you like oh dang or were at you at first I was like a little flattered but then I saw that there was no credit given at all I'm like dude this could have been like even if like point one percent of his followers saw that little credit with the size he has right right you know that could have been people who could have discovered a new creator that they might like sure you know like that could have been good for both me and sam essentially like anytime brent like does this he has no intention of sharing the success of the video with anybody all right case of brent rivera here's the case for the plagiarism uh (laughs) he's stealing quite original ideas and doing them beat for beat line for line Uh, many a times it's very deliberate it's impossible to argue it's not on purpose Mm -hmm. which means it's part of a broader strategy Mm -hmm. and i don't know how much this should factor into like a verdict but yeah knowing that it's so intentional that it's systematized Mm -hmm. makes me matter yeah and for the argument against brent rivera being a plagiarist um he's just a little guy he's just a little guy yeah he didn't mean anything by it. he's a little baby babies need to steal god it's really hard to make a case for his innocence here but yeah I, you might shoot for the angle that like online video ownership is like hard to like super super prove yeah but th- i wouldn't i don't think it, it's enough i don't yeah. think it's enough to save him here right it sucks because like i know that that brent for example is somebody who i think benefits from stealing ideas from people because mm-hmm. well one he doesn't face any like actual repercussions for it i could bring this up to what like instagram but they're not gonna do jack shit about it because brent rivera's 21 million followers bringing in so much revenue it's not in their best interest to do the right thing so yeah. the verdict is that uh of all the people in the video he's the only one that's guilty 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 yeah. of plagiarism wish he'd be canceled I, that's the other hard thing though <laughs> that's the other hard thing i don't wish ill upon him yeah, maybe that, that's the hard thing is we exist in a system with no reasonable punishments yeah so like like, I don't actually know if I would wish cancellation on someone because you have no control of what's going to happen to them. Right. And like, I don't want anyone to watch this video and harass literally a single person because mm. of this, especially if they think it's on our behalf, which yeah. it would not be. Yeah. I think he's just going to do this until he's stopped. So part yeah. of me wants him to stop. But another part of me is like, but I can't enforce that he stop. And I certainly don't want like a big cancel mob making him stop because yeah. that's kind of ghoulish and crazy. Yeah, it, just, it, it sucks because like dude's guilty as fuck, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But he's going to continue to get away with it because it's it's gotten him to the point that he currently is at yeah and i i don't think any of us are stronger than his fan base in terms of trying to uh, overthrow him he did choose to do something kind of villainous but he also was directly incentivized to and rewarded and, yeah and rewarded and frankly like if he wanted to get big at his talent and originality level <laughs> that might have been impossible <laughs> so i love that that's so he's talentless I'm, and unoriginal i'm not doing a bit at all <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I think there's a lot of like unoriginal original untalented people who want to be big Mm -hmm. and they see that the internet can provide that for them and they know that if they were to play fair no shot yeah you know what i mean this is the best because this is like the meanest mason can get uh i'm not even (laughs) trying to be mean no i know that's what i'm saying is like this is the meanest you can get and it's like i just think that the reason chronic plagiarizers copy is because they believe deep down inside Mm -hmm. that if they were to really come up with ideas, Mm -hmm. original ideas, they'd fucking flop. What is it when it's the opposite of believing in yourself? Oh, uh, (laughs) self-loathing? I would guess that Brent Rivera's self-loathing is like accurate and justified. (laughs) Were we ever going to want to talk about the fact that I've like met Brent Rivera multiple times in person? You have? Yeah. Did I not tell you about this? No, tell me now. Tell me now. (laughs) Do tell. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. it's funny that I didn't mention this earlier because uh, the the reason why I know him is because I went in and I sang. I recorded some vocals for a music video he was doing because he wanted my vocals to be his. No way. Yeah. Wow. It's like it's like an insight into his mind how it <laughs> fundamentally works. He's like, how yeah. can I take talented people and say it's me? Yeah. <laughs> funnily enough, I like very weird, like I was kind of willing to do it because I felt like he was going to acknowledge that it wasn't his voice. As a musician, yeah. as I'm sure you can relate. Sure. The idea of like wanting to shop around for people who you can claim are you is yeah. fucking crazy. I've never I've never considered or I've never really heard of a person steal somebody's voice. Yeah. Or purposefully be like, well, I'm not a good singer. So I've heard of like I'm going to pretend I'm you. I I remember posting an Instagram story where I had to mute the sound because it was for the song. Oh, and it was like too much of a peek behind the curtain. Yeah. That Brent is a fucking liar who steals talent from other people. <laughs> he was nice to me, um, but that's because he was he was nice to me while uh, stealing siphoning my life from me. Right. I mean, yeah. of course he's gonna be nice to you. Imagine if you were doing something antithetical to his goals. I'm yeah. sure he wouldn't be nice to you. I, I, I think this is maybe more actually what happens is that he's nice to certain people, but then he's also a dick to others. This is just a personal thing, but yeah. in my book, if you're nice to some people but a dick to others, that means you're a dick. 100% of the time. <laughs> uh, it's just when you're nice to people, it's it's because you get something out of it sort of thing. Yeah. It just means that you're strategically not mean to everybody. Yeah, but like, yeah. that doesn't make me think you're awesome. Yeah. So in the end, here's what I want people to take away from our stupid cancel council. Actually, most of the time, even if it feels bad, it's not really plagiarism and no one should be canceled for it. Right. It takes a pretty extreme case to mobilize the internet against someone. Mm. And I honestly don't feel very good about mobilizing the internet against right. someone. So I hope you'll just treat this as like a learning experience where you grew in your little noggin <laughs> yeah i think also you know just to defend him a little bit i do think when you get big enough i don't think he has time sure. to like actually think of video ideas i'm sure there's also a lot of pressure to make uh high yeah. quality stuff pretty consistently and uh the fact that he, the only way to do that for him is to like Skim see what other people top. are doing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not trying to attribute blame to just an individual i want to attribute that blame to a system we've created which does not favor smaller creators. I want you to imagine that you're a new aspiring comedy content creator. You want to make like sketches and videos on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and stuff. You've seen successful comedy sketches, comedy talent videos, funny reaction videos, whatever. You want to make these videos you love and you want to gain an audience and you want to get paid to do it. Starting from scratch is probably like one of the hardest things you can do as a creator. There's a <laughs> lot of people to compete with who are already well established. Why would anyone watch your videos? <laughs> wow. So if you want a shot, you got to hope and pray that Daddy YouTube's algorithm funnels people to your comedy videos before anyone else's. And the YouTube algorithm, or YouTube Daddy for short, Daddy. is not 100% known or understood. But what we do know about it is that it absolutely privileges speed of posting. Like, how frequently can you just pump out content? If you can pump out content faster than the other creators in your genre, the algorithm, or YouTube Daddy, Daddy. will start favoring you. But how can you do that while also retaining some semblance of quality? Do you hear that? No, thank God. Plagiarism kind of becomes the best and most logical strategy to succeed here. And the only thing stopping you from doing something like that is morals, morals integrity, integrity, and uh, a genuine pursuit of your own creative endeavors. And integrity is great. I feel like I personally have it, but integrity also can't fix the fact that this is like a bad system. Any system where unethical behavior is naturally incentivized with no counterbalancing force other than like honor system or being a good person, that system's going to fail. I mean, that's why ultimately Ultimately, plagiarizers aren't just around. They don't just exist. They're kind of at the top. The algorithm or YouTube daddy, daddy is genuinely good at finding plagiarizers and funneling audiences toward them. You know what I'm worried about, Danny? What? I'm worried that people are going to like watch this video. You're worried people are going to watch this video? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't want anyone to watch this right, video. Yeah, yeah, damn. I'm worried that people are going to watch this video mm -hmm. and feel discouraged and like, oh, okay, I get it. Uh, yeah. YouTube is a, a big piece of poo poo where mm, it's, yeah. just, it's just a, a palace of theft and theft despair. Despair palace. When in reality, I want to encourage people, but did we make the wrong kind of video to do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think you could come away with like a more positive theme. Because I really do have a positive outlook on this, I 
fucking promise. <laughs> I do as well, because there are a lot of people out there making some genuinely good original ideas. In fact, there's more people making original dope stuff mm-hmm. by far yeah. than there are people abusing this garbage. Yeah. Through this job that was only possible through mm. the good aspects of YouTube and mm. the internet, yeah. we've met some of the most creative, interesting, kind, sexy, worthwhile, mm. hot people that we've <laughs> ever known. Yeah, I mean, we've personally met with and worked with a lot of amazing uh, original creators and uh, I know we're not the only ones who feel that way. I've been very fortunate to be working with two stand-up comedians I really enjoy working with and also just you know meeting so many different content creators like yeah, you guys sure. and then also like I think it's all about connections and knowing people. We agree with Chad the connections you make with other people and the stuff you get to make and share with the world is definitely more good than Brent Rivera is bad. <laughs> Build a community of friends and other content creators and involve the talented people into your ideas, get their talents into the spotlight. This is kind of how our relationship started, Mason. I had been making YouTube videos for a few years, but nothing had really been sticking. Yeah. And then we joined an acapella group together and I was like, this guy's pretty funny and he does really good voices and stuff. Let's make a video together. And if there were to be some sort of call to action at the end of this video, it would be to just go out and support the absolute shit out of everyone that you know who is creating good, original, uh, amazing stuff. You have the power to encourage and lift your favorite creators beyond the concerns of bad actors like Brent Rivera by maxing out your support for them. Be louder, more intense, and possibly more monetary about Mm. the ways you support your favorite creators. Chad, is there anything that you want to like tell our viewers or the, the creators out there? Maybe focus on your relationships and be a good person. Hey Mason, guess my fart again? Oh, no. Hey, go to bed. Mm -hmm. There's nothing for you here. Nothing. Go to bed. Absolutely nothing. I'm so sorry for everything. I'm not.